Yeah. This is it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, today we're going to be concentrating on really uh, the, the continuing on the discussion of re-engineering our genes because that's really what this is all about. We want to re-engineer how our genes are working for us because so often times without realizing that they're working against us and they're actually programming us to die prematurely and to develop disease prematurely. So we're going to look specifically today at the role of thyroid and uh, the thyroid stimulating hormone, the TSH, a way to evaluate how well the thyroid is functioning in our bodies, one of several ways. And then also insulin levels both before and after meals. How do those tests that we have available to us impact our personal risk of having serious problems later on and helping us make adjustments now that can literally totally reprogram how the genes are relating to these, to these factors. <clears throat> so we, we've been looking in this series in a, at a group of transforming tests. Several weeks ago we talked about the cardiac CRP, the inflammatory protein, and how that impacts our health and how that literally turns on genes for diabetes, genes for certain cancer, genes for um, obesity, genes for um, cardiovascular disease, autoimmune disease, and so forth. So controlling that is critical. Homocysteine is another blood test we've been looking at. So today we'll be concentrating on fasting insulin, but also insulin after meals. This is a great test, insulin before a meal, but it is nowhere near as sensitive as insulin after we have something in our body. It's kind of like uh, blood pressure when we have it measured in a truly resting state. It gives us an idea of how healthy our cardiovascular system is. But if we, if we get somebody on a treadmill and stress their cardiovascular system, stress their body, then what happens to the blood pressure? So many people who have normal or even optimal blood sugars, or excuse me, blood pressures in this case, be, while they're resting, they will end up having a very excessively elevated blood pressures after or during that exercise. So it's a way to evaluate what's really going on under the scene or, or below the surface, so to speak, so that we can prevent uh, pathology from actually taking place. Too often in medicine, we, we wait to get that final diagnosis before we intervene. That's, that's, that's so inappropriate mm -hmm. because it's like we're waiting for somebody to get sick enough and now, okay, you meet all the criteria for this diagnosis, now we're going to treat you. It's almost encouraging disease. And so what we're trying to do, and this is a, a paradigm that's shifting within conventional medicine. Conventional medicine is now more and more embracing the idea, let's try to catch the condition as early as possible, which actually becomes the best way to prevent complications. So traditional medicine has focused on being very good at diagnosing a condition and then trying to forestall the complication rate of that disease. Okay. And so, but now they're, now they're recognizing that the best way to forestall the complications of those diseases is actually picking up through tests like this, catching the early indicators of that disease and treating it before the, even the diagnosis is made. In fact, the goal is to prevent the diagnosis. But these markers, these indicators, tell us where we're headed. And so why wait until we actually get to the edge of the cliff and we're actually starting to slip off to, to call the ambulance or to throw a rope? Mm -hmm. Okay, there's many better ways to do this. So we'll be looking at these, and then uh, other times we're going to be looking at the, the cholesterol profile, the VAP lipid panel in particular, and then the vitamin D test. Now, last week we covered vitamin D, but I, 